Though at least with the Steel Sky you know your limits. Out here, it's endless. I kinda get what Aerith was saying now. What do you do when you know your own fate ends in tragedy? What does knowing your time is ending soon do to a person? What does it feel like to know your life is coming to an end out of your own control? Having a hero is meant to inspire. To give your life new heights to traverse. Sephiroth was that hero for many, especially for our innocent little fledgling, Cloud. But strength isn't the only thing required to be a hero, something Sephiroth surely wasn't lacking in. Hope. Hope is what's taken away from him. With vengeance, he's taken hope away from those he's inspired, killing Cloud's naivete with his turmoil, giving birth to the inverse of hope. Despair. The despair of having his pure abuse corrupted by his hero turned rogue. The sickness brought onto him by Shinra. What a burden for a single person to carry. His memories becoming a source of untrustworthiness. Such doubt can make you doubt your bonds, even for those you cherish dearly. Having your mind get you to see what would give you closure instead of what's right in front of you. Craving for resolution instead of truth. The desire for closure is a slimy one. It can crawl through your skin like an invisible venom. Yet, inspiration doesn't come from just hope. Inspiration has a sinister twin. Fear. What else would inspire someone to great heights? Turmoil is the secret ingredient to transmuting hope into fear. The duality of a budding human being. Will you let joy or pain be your cause for growth? Do we even have a choice in that matter? If you were thrown into tragedy, where's the autonomy of our evolution? Are we just puppets to the poles of fate? No matter what our reasons for growth are, we are always searching. And the path doesn't have to be cruelly dredged alone. Whether it be by love or tragedy, having companionship makes the road traveled far less heartbreaking. When it comes to inspiration, there's always a source. The past never shuts its mouth, making its way back to you one way or another, especially the whispers of pain that won't loosen its grip on you. But such obstacles needn't have to weigh you down. Trust. What good are relationships without trust? Without it, insecurities can plant themselves. Even when intentions are well endeavored, without trust, only suspicion may take root. Hatred, enemies, and wars are bred through mistrust. Once these things are solidified, there's hardly ever a chance to uproot these beliefs of abhorrence. Spare me. You had your chance. Yet, if people didn't know who you were, could your enemies actually trust you? For what it's worth, I want you to know. I'm sorry. When you're invisible, you can feel like a stowaway, just drifting about aimlessly. There are some silver linings to being a drifter. The people you bump into, the stories you can share. But if all goes awry and you're gunned down, would anyone know? Would you just be another forgotten person? Just another cog in the machine when seen as just another disposable passerby? Don't shoot! Are we just prisoners of our past? To be haunted by what we've done before. Even when we believe ourselves to be doing the right thing, the people around us can judge otherwise. Alongside Cloud, Barrett has lost the trust of those dear to him through no fault of his own, having to carry the pain of wanting to do the right thing when everyone else sees you as nothing but a crook. After everything went down, I didn't know what to do. All I had was guilt and regret and the weight of it was too much. Even so, the past can be honored. Our memories can be precious. They can help us remember what it's like to feel hopeful, to remember happiness, to give space for people who are not around us physically, but their feelings are imprinted onto us, allowing them to linger with us. Even with all the tragedy, we can see the pleasure in memories as the Cosmo Canyon villagers welcome home Nanaki. It's due to our abilities to tell stories of the past that he's able to find peace with his misshapen feelings for his father. History can be a source of closure. The past can drive the future. There is one thing I can do. Return their kindness. And try to make the most of what I've been given. 
Yet, how can a conductor of such solace also be the source of profound suffering? Let that righteous anger guide you. The despair linking Cloud to Sephiroth and his body degrading due to his curse from the Mako poisoning weighs on him. Despair can make it hard for us to distinguish friend from foe. Trust is a fickle thing. How are you supposed to be able to trust when someone you believe you could put your faith in has betrayed you before? Are some of us just destined for suffering unending? How much of this pain is truly optional? Even with the will to go beyond our struggles, sometimes the best we can do is make peace with it. And that's okay. Just be wary of being trapped by the past that there's nothing but red in your eyes. Please, it alone can liberate us from this endless dream. It's hard to tell just how accurate our memories are. They tend to change little by little over time. Slightly enough, we don't register just how different the same memory is today compared to years ago. It can be a tragedy to live in our nostalgia, and about what we had. At times we're better back in a memory, or even wallowing in what we didn't have, carrying around with us what it was that stopped us from getting our needs met. Not at you. At everything. Must be nice. I don't have anyone like that, and it feels like I'm being taunted for it. The weight of the truth can be a heavy burden if you can't own up to it. Especially if those same memories paint you as someone weak. Wouldn't it be better to forget your own powerlessness so you could just press forward? When we see others falling apart from the same pain as ours, it's easy to let despair simmer and take over. Thankfully, we can be fortunate enough to have other people care about us. Thriving despite being wounded doesn't have to be just a fantasy. Having a hand reach out for us can be a godsend. Now, I'm not saying we should forget about them. No way I ever could. We gotta stop living in guilt and regret. Even then, we can relapse. The pain can return for no good reason. Influenced by his connection to Sephiroth and his actions easily manipulated, his rage is growing ever more palpable. It's easy to react on autopilot when your sense of autonomy has been forcibly stripped away from you. Despite knowing her destiny, Aerith doesn't let knowing of her coming disaster catch her like a deer in the headlights. Even with the knowledge of what's to come for her, she's proactive in paving the space for Cloud to move forward once tragedy hopes to cripple him. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth dangles hope right in front of your face. It gives you the false belief that you can prevent the inevitable, that even predetermined tragedy could be prevented if you just push through hard enough. But as Eris compassion towards Cloud shows. Whatever happens, don't blame yourself. He needn't blame himself for the misfortune he himself could not prevent. Things don't always swing towards our wishes, no matter how sincerely we beg for it to being so. When we're in despair, it's hard not to take things personally, taking our pain as factual evidence that there's something wrong with us. But often, the cause of our despair were set off by powers we had no say in. It can be hard to let in the pain without having our narrative of self-hatred boil over. But tragedy needn't dirty how we see ourselves. It can simply inhabit a space in our life without coloring over the entirety of it, allowing us to have room for life to blossom despite it. This isn't about me though. It's about saving the world. And you. So thank you, Cloud, for everything. As always, my name's Johnny, and thanks for spending time with me. Couldn't have done it without the J-Squad either. Oh, don't go getting all sentimental. We were just doing what you would have done. 
You said it. We all want what's best for this place. It's, it's our home. And, and none of us would be standing here today if it weren't for you, Johnny Prime. Truly, you are the realest bro, bro. <laughs> well, I'm just happy to know that whatever trials await, we'll face them together. Uh, yeah, about that. Now that all the renovations are complete, I think it's time that we peace out. What? Don't worry. You got this, Johnny. Johnny? You don't need us anymore, Johnny. You've got you. Johnny! Johnny! Johnny. Ah!